So, your dog seems to be extremely tired lately, is a little depressed, and is having weird issues with its skin, with the hair falling out in random patches, without him even being itchy. He seems to feel cold all the time, and he is gaining weight, without you even feeding him extra food. Your dog may be suffering from hypothyroidism. Watch this video to find out what that means and what you can do to help him. Hey guys, Dr. Peter. I'm a veterinarian from South Africa. Hypothyroidism is a relatively common endocrine disorder in dogs where the thyroid glands become underactive. The thyroid is one of the most important organs in the body and is located in the neck near the trachea or windpipe just below the larynx or voice box. It contains two lobes, one on each side of the trachea, almost looking like a butterfly, and is controlled by the pituitary gland which is located at the base of the brain. The main function of the thyroid gland is to regulate the body's metabolic rate, which basically means turning food into fuel. So when the thyroid gland becomes underactive, in the case of hypothyroidism, the dog's metabolism will start to slow down. In dogs, hypothyroidism is usually caused by one of two diseases, lymphocytic thyroiditis or idiopathic thyroid gland atrophy. Lymphocytic thyroiditis is the most common cause of hypothyroidism and is thought to be an immune-mediated disease where the immune system basically decides that the thyroid glands are abnormal or foreign and starts to attack them, thereby destroying the cells and decreasing the amount of healthy thyroid tissue. We don't yet know exactly why the immune system does this, but it is likely due to a heritable trait, meaning that genetics could play a big role. With idiopathic thyroid gland atrophy, the normal thyroid tissue is replaced by fat tissue for a reason that we still don't completely understand. Iodine deficiency, thyroid gland cancer, congenital thyroid defects, and an inability of the pituitary gland to adequately stimulate the thyroid gland to produce enough thyroid hormone can also cause hypothyroidism in dogs, although these conditions are rather rare. Now when the body's metabolic rate slows down, almost every organ system will be affected in some way or another. Most dogs with hypothyroidism will show a combination of clinical signs, including weight gain without an increase in appetite, lethargy, lack of desire to exercise, dry dull hair with excessive shedding, thin hair coat with bald patches, especially on the dog's trunk, back of the rear legs and tail, increased risk of getting skin and ear infections, failure of the hair to regrow after shaving, a slower heart rate, and most of the time you will notice the dog getting cold easily, meaning it will try to seek heated areas such as the sun or a heater to lie down and rest in. And in more rare cases, the dog may also show a tragic facial expression where the skin on the face thickens. He may show non-painful lameness, dragging the feet, lack of coordination and a head tilt. If he's a male dog, he may show loss of libido or infertility. If she is a female dog, she may display lack of heat periods, infertility and abortion. They may develop fat deposits in the corneas of the eye. And finally, they may also develop a condition known as keratoconjunctivitis sicca, or in other words, dry eye, where the eyes are not able to produce enough tears anymore and subsequently will physically start to dry out. Now your vet will need to get a thorough history from you with regards to your dog's clinical signs and then perform a proper physical examination in order to determine which organ systems and to what extent they are all affected. This will already provide your vet with a ton of useful information and if enough evidence is gathered that raises a suspicion of hypothyroidism, your vet will likely recommend to perform screening blood tests to look at the dog's thyroid hormone and cholesterol levels as well as the markers that detect kidney, liver or pancreatic damage and you may also perform a urinalysis on your dog's urine in order to make sure that there aren't any other diseases or conditions which could cause similar clinical signs. If your dog has had any changes in their skin such as hair loss or hyperpigmentation, your vet may also want to do skin scrapes where you will gently scrape the surface of the skin with a scalpel or skin smears where you will press a microscope slide against the skin to look under the microscope 
for any signs of secondary bacterial skin infections. Now in order to understand how hypothyroidism is properly diagnosed, we first need to quickly look at how the dog's thyroid glands normally work. Thyroxine or T4 is the primary hormone that is produced by the thyroid gland in response to the stimulation from the pituitary gland. A feedback system exists between the thyroid gland and the pituitary gland where when the thyroxine concentration in the blood is low, the pituitary gland sends a signal to the thyroid gland using the thyroid stimulating hormone or TSH to produce more thyroxine. And when the thyroxine levels in the blood return to normal again, the pituitary gland decreases the production of thyroid stimulating hormone, thereby stopping the signals to the thyroid to produce more thyroxine and hence reducing the production of thyroxine. Now thyroxine circulates in the blood in two different forms. One form of the hormone is bound or attached to proteins in the blood, while the other form circulates freely within the bloodstream. Total T4 measures the levels of both forms of the hormone in the blood. If the total T4 concentration is well within the normal range, then your dog does not have hypothyroidism. If the T4 concentration is at the low end or below the normal range and your dog has supportive clinical signs, then hypothyroidism is likely. But because there are many other conditions other than hypothyroidism that may also cause the total T4 levels in the blood to be reduced, your vet will need to measure the free tyroxine or free T4 as well in order to definitively diagnose hypothyroidism. Free T4 is less affected by the presence of other illnesses or drug therapies. So if the free T4 is within the normal range, despite the total T4 being low, then your dog does not have hypothyroidism. But if the free T4 is below the normal range, and your dog has supportive clinical signs, then a diagnosis of hypothyroidism can be confirmed. Your vet can also test the endogenous thyroid stimulating hormone, also known as thyrotropin, which will be increased in the case of hypothyroidism as the pituitary gland tries to stimulate the thyroid gland to increase thyroid hormone production in a response to low blood thyroxine hormone levels. Now the problem with testing the free T4 and endogenous TSH hormones are that they can usually only be tested at a referral laboratory so it is much more costly and takes much longer to get the results. Your vet will therefore first start with testing the total T4 levels, which can be done at most veterinary practices. And if the results of the total T4 levels are ambiguous, then he may recommend sending a blood sample away to the lab to test for free T4 and endogenous TSH hormones as well. So in short, in order to definitively diagnose hypothyroidism, your dog will need to have normal or increased endogenous TSH hormones, low total T4 levels, as well as low free T4 levels in the blood. Hypothyroidism can also be diagnosed by performing a special ultrasound where the thyroid will physically look smaller, but this can usually only be done by an experienced radiologist and will therefore also be much more expensive than just running these blood tests. Now it is important to understand that diseases that do not necessarily involve the thyroid gland as well as some drugs can alter the results from these thyroid function tests resulting in a condition we call euthyroid sick syndrome. So if your dog is sick or it receives medication like glucocorticoids phenobarbital, sulfonamide, clomipramine, or aspirin, then your vet will first attempt to resolve the non-thyroidal illness and withdraw the administration of these drugs before attempting to test the thyroid function. And if this is not possible, you will need to run the full thyroid test panel, which include testing the thyroid stimulating, total T4, and free T4 hormone levels in the blood. Now the good news is that hypothyroidism can easily be treated, but it is unfortunately not curable. Because your dog has lower than normal thyroid tissue, which cannot produce enough thyroid hormones, you will need thyroid hormone supplementation in order to mimic the effect of the thyroid hormones and thus to maintain normal metabolic functions. This can easily be done by giving him oral synthetic 
thyroid hormones called levothyroxine or L-thyroxine, and this will need to be given every single day for the rest of the dog's life. It usually takes a couple of weeks to see an effect, but if your dog reacts well to the medication, he will soon regain his energy, lose some weight, stop shedding the hair, and will just have a brighter attitude and mentality overall. Your vet will likely start your dog on a standard dose of thyroid replacement hormone based on his weight, but your dog will need to come back after about one month's treatment so that your vet can retest his blood to see if his thyroid hormone levels are normal and he will likely only need to test the total T4 levels for this. If it is too low, the dose may need to be adjusted upwards and if it is too high, the dose may need to be adjusted downwards. And seeing that your dog's tolerance for the thyroid replacement hormone may change over time, he will need to have his thyroid levels tested every 6 to 12 months, so it is important that you take your dog back to the vet for his follow-ups in order to ensure that he is neither over nor underdosed. If he becomes overdosed, he will develop hyperthyroidism, which will include clinical signs like hyperactivity, lack of sleep, weight loss, panting, nervousness, and an increase in water consumption. So even though hypothyroidism is a relatively common disease to see in dogs, it can easily be managed and your dog should still have a long, healthy and happy life once his thyroid hormone levels turn back to normal. Thanks for watching guys. Let me know down in the comments if your dog was ever diagnosed with hypothyroidism and what you and your vet did to help him. Cheers.